Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Vanessa and you are watching the Exploring Oracle or the Exploracle for short. So today we will be taking a look at the Meraki Tarot 2nd Edition. So this is a deck that I backed on Kickstarter last year, uh, but I only recently got. So I don't know if you watched my delayed deck haul video. I'll be linking it up if you were interested. But the short story is... The shipping forwarder that I used uh, to ship my decks from the U.S. to the Philippines had some issues when they moved to a different warehouse and it caused my decks to be delayed by almost almost nine months or almost a year. Uh, this is the second edition. There's already a pre-order going on for the third edition of the Miraki Tarot. Uh, and yeah, so that, that would give you an idea of how long I had to wait for this deck. But anyway, if you're new here, I usually do deck flip-throughs. I talk about the cardstock, the shuffle, um, the guidebook for the decks that I feature on my channel, as well as do a sample reading at the end, just so, uh, you know, I read from the guidebook just so you know how the guidebook reads. I have timestamps below for all of the sections of this video if you just want to jump to a particular section. Anyway, so let's start with the guidebook. This is the Miraki workbook for tarot and crystal work. It is edged in this beautiful green. You would have to buy this separately from the deck, but I did get this because it looks like a really well thought of guidebook. And you, it is a workbook and a guidebook, so if you really wanted to do a deep dive or learn more about crystals and tarot, I think it is worth getting. So it has some spreads or layouts. And then some keywords and associations. So for crystals, um, you have for the tarot keywords. I think this is also in the, some extra cards here in the deck. Numerology, symbology, astrological and planetary associations. Some elemental insights, and then a workbook section where you put in your thoughts. And then you go into the meanings of the actual cards. So for each card, um, you have the planetar planetary ruler, astrology, the modality, element, affirmation, if you were, let's say, choosing a card for yes-no questions, uh, and then a crystal association. Then you have the light keywords, the dark keywords, and a more detailed paragraph for the meanings. And of course, some crystal associations and a space for you to write your reflections. So that's how it is for all of the cards. I also like this detail that shows you the section for the majors and then the minor arcana. So I think that is really well done. It is a relatively thick guidebook, workbook. And at the end, you also have oops, some section on the additional oracle cards that are included in the deck. All right, so that is the guidebook. This is the box. It is really beautiful and well produced. Uh, I saw this deck, the first edition, I saw um, in one of the YouTube channels that I follow. I forget which one. It did have borders, uh, so, but I did tell myself that I wanted to get that deck. Uh, so when I saw the Kickstarter for this deck that was borderless, I jumped at the chance. I think I was one of the first few backers for this deck. Okay, so let me just arrange this. Okay. So in the deck, you have the Meraki Tarot, a thank you card from Kerry of Bush. I don't know if it's Bushhead or Boucher designs. And then you have these uh, reference cards. So for the astrological signs, um, solar system associations, crystal associations, and then the keywords for the major and minor arcana.
the ones uh, and then the minor arcana association so i think this is also what is in the guidebook but you have them in this handy card reference format so let me just put that to the side the cards are in a rose petal finish and i say that like that because i am not fond of this card stuff <laughs> Uh, but the backs are beautiful and reversible and really good quality. It snaps back really well. But yeah, it is in this rose petal finish, which I am not too fond of, but let's see. Oh, and of course, gilded in this really beautiful matte green or edged. And I like painted edges. I do prefer this over gilding. So really good job. Okay, so let's just zoom in and take a closer look at all of the cards. Alright, so let's take a look at the cards in detail. So they are borderless. See, it sticks to each other because of the rose petal finish. Uh, you do have the number and the name of the card at the bottom. In the newer version, she did change the font so that it is more readable. Now, I don't mind it in the tarot, even though it is a little bit hard to read. Um, I think it's just because I know the card's name, so it's easy to to figure out what the card is. And I do think that the uh, this font suits the deck's art and design really well. Now, it is a nature-based deck, which I absolutely love. And there are uh, crystals also in some of the, the cards. <clears throat> I really like the art of this deck and I do uh, I do prefer that it is borderless so I don't think you see any people people figures it's just the hands in this deck and I don't know for some reason I do connect a lot more with like nature based or animal decks than I do with decks that have a lot of people in them I don't know what that means if you have an idea please let me know comment down below um, but yeah, I, I, I have a better connection to decks that don't feature people. The colors are bright and beautiful and saturated. Now for this judgment card, I am not, I'm not too fond of this card. Um, I I, need, I don't connect with that many eyes, <laughs> but uh, most of the cards are just really absolutely stunning for me. Then you have an extra card, the Miraki, before you move on to the minors. You know, even though this is nature-based, there is something otherworldly uh, about this art. Absolutely love this type of wands. And the courts are reversed, so it starts with the king. The queen, the knight, and the page. Moving on to the next suit, the suit of cups. Okay, then the sword suit.
I, I really wish this was in a different card stop. I, I, that would be my only gripe for this deck. And I probably would keep saying it. <laughs> the reason for that is I do also shuffle and work with jumpers, which is impossible to do in this kind of card stop. I do have some workarounds to get cards if it's in this finish, but you know, I would have just preferred a different card stock. But that is, of course, my preference because I know some people do love the feel of this rose petal-y card stock. Absolutely in love with the art. <laughs> Save for a few cards, but you know. Majority of the of the cards here are just stunning for me. Okay, and then we'll be moving on to the last card. This is the last card of the tarot. And then you have a few cards here. Um that are oracles that you can use as an oracle deck. So we have aspiration, apathy. It's uh, reclusive. <laughs> See, now I'm having trouble reading it because it's not keywords that I'm familiar with. Uh, this one is expansive. What? Obscurity, <laughs> sorry, obscurity. Oh, I love this card. Then clarity. Wow. And then a yes and a no card. So these oracles, I probably won't be shuffling in together with the deck. Uh, that's just a preference, of course. Some of you might want to include it. Uh, but I would probably work with those cards separately. And then let me zoom out so we can see how this shuffles. Okay. So, Riffle Shuffling, a Rose Petal deck. Um, it's not... I don't have a problem with that. So, it's not an issue. I can also bridge it. We'll do it a few more times. Just so you can see... Maybe one more. So no issues with the riffle shuffling. You get a pretty good mix. You can bridge it. But then... <laughs> these cards do. Uh, but then, when you overhand this, it is in flux. So I'm trying to break it up, but you will see it would always be sticking together. Uh, I don't know if it will work itself out with more use, but right now, so you can even see the sections, um, it is not my favorite to overhand. Now usually with decks like this, what I would usually do to pick a card would be to cut to cut and to pick a card okay so let us read for the three of wands so you have an idea of how the guidebook reads all right so for the three of wands oh sorry this is not the three of swords <laughs> Let's see i just said that i don't really have I'm sorry, I kept saying the Three of Wands, but this is the Three of Swords. So we'll be reading for the Three of Swords uh, with the Planetary Ruler of Saturn, Astrological Association of Libra. It is a cardinal modality in the element of air. It is generally associated as a no card, and the activating crystal is a black tourmaline. So the light meaning is argumentative, Conflict, disruption, betrayed, hurt, and loss. While well, the dark meaning is aggression, compromise, conflict, disorder, healing, and loneliness. So, 
Uh, for the light, meaning, the Three of Swords delivers a message of rejection, hurt, and betrayal. This is often a matter of mind over heart. It calls you to empower logical thinking and allow the heart's path to take a back seat. This may help minimize the devastation and grief. Though it is hard to go through times like these, this too is a part of life. And with time, we come to appreciate the lessons of these moments, giving a greater sense of self and strength. This is also a time to release stuck emotions that weigh you down and cloud your chances to heal. And then for the dark meaning, this position offers you the suggestion to look within and find that part of you that believes in the goodness that is your spirit. Your inner spirit and words are a powerful tool or are powerful tools for a healing journey. This may also show that you have a sensitivity to the way others approach you in their words and actions. This may be a time when you are in mourning from a loss and that time should be given to work through it and heal. The crystal association is black tourmaline, which offers protection, grounding, and calming. So this is a purifying stone that transforms dense energy into a lighter and higher vibration. It facilitates balance and positive thinking. So I do like what it says in the guidebook. Uh, there is a little bit of a typo, but I don't mind that a lot. And yeah, this deck, it just, the art really does speak to me. And let me, let me choose another card. So just with the vibe of the Three of Swords, I think this card also matches that vibe. And yeah, so what do you think of this deck? Uh, do you have it? Do you have the first edition? Are you interested in getting the third edition, which has more clear or readable fonts? Um, honestly, if I had known <laughs> that you would be releasing a version that had clearer fonts, I would have waited for that. Um, but, you know, I, I already have the second edition, so there, there's no point in me getting another deck just because of that of the difference in the font, especially since I can kind of read, I can kind of guess what uh, what the what the cards are, but as you notice, I did still make a mistake between the wands and the swords, <laughs> which gives you an idea of how bad my eyes are. I mean, it's, but yeah, honestly, I think that was just me because this is obviously the swords. <laughs> so it's just me not paying much attention, I guess. But yeah, so... That has been the flip through of the Miraki Tarot second edition. If you find this video helpful, please don't forget to click on the like button and do consider subscribing to my channel where I post videos like this at least once a week. See you again next time. Bye!